Welcome to the presentation of Profinet for machine building. Precision and high performance play a very important role in drive technology. Profinet supports you in this process as a high performance drive bus to which OPC UA and TCP IP services can run in parallel. In paper printing, packaging and other production machinery, a large number of axes have to be synchronized with each other. Profinet assists in the synchronization of somatic drives, and thanks to the somatic time-based I.O., other actuators can also be switched with accuracy down to the microsecond. Through Profinet IRT, synchronized time clocks run in all the components, providing the system with microsecond precision. But now I would also like to show you how easily everything can be engineered in the TIA portal, and to do so I would like to present the following test configuration. On the one hand we have the S7-1500 in which our motion control program will run, and connected via Profinet we have the Synamics S120 with two axes, which need to be synchronized with each other. But now let us begin with the engineering. I have prepared a TIA portal project, and S7-1500 is already integrated in the TIA portal project. The Synamics S120 has already been commissioned with the starter software, and from this software a GSD file has been exported with the configuration. Now I would like to integrate the drive into the project. To do so, I go into the hardware catalog, open the additional field devices, Profinet I.O., Drives, Siemens, Synamics, and Synamics S120 is the exported GSD file that I would now like to import. And I will now use drag and drop to connect the drive to the S7-1500. And now comes determinism. Determinism means that the timing of the entire system can be precisely determined. To do so, we need to create the topology in Profinet IRT. In the topology, we will use drag and drop to connect the individual ports to each other, as found in the hardware configuration, and an exact schedule for the message frames can be created as a result. An additional advantage of the topology is that the new device is automatically configured when components are replaced. And now we still want to define the master in the system. To do so, we click on the S7-1500, select the Profinet interface, go to Extended Settings, Real-Time Settings, and here we select Sync Master. The next thing we need to do is to configure the isochronous mode for the Synamics S120. To do so, we once again go to the Profinet interface of the drive, Extended Settings, Isochronous Mode, and we also check the box here. Now we are finished with the hardware configuration, and together we want to create a motion control program. For this we want to first create two technology objects in the S7-1500. We open the controller, go to Technology Objects, and Add New Technology Object. Now we select a motion control technology object, and here, first of all, the positioning axis. The positioning axis is intended to later be the control axis in our synchronized motion control system. We create the positioning axis. Now the positioning axis has been created, and now we need to define it in detail. Our test box contains rotational axes, and that's why in the TO we define the axis type as a rotational axis. For a better overview, I will minimize the lower window. So we have a rotational axis. Degrees as a unit of measurement is right for us. Now we define the hardware interface. The drive is now preset to ProfiDrive. ProfiDrive is a standardized interface between the drive and the controller. The drive and the controller speak the same language, and when you replace the drive and install a different drive with a ProfiDrive telegram, the controller and drive will continue to understand each other. Here we now select the drive that we have integrated into the hardware configuration. The red axis, in other words the upper axis on our test box, will later be the master axis, and that is why we select this red axis here. We now move further down to the data exchange. Here we see that ProfiDrive Telegram 5 is the default setting. This is the telegram that you also need for isochronous communication. Now you still have to specify the reference speed and the maximum speed. Because I have already put the drive into operation, I know that the configuration there is 6000 RPM. 
The sensor also communicates via the ProfiDrive Telegram 5. Except there is no rotational sensor installed in the red axis in our test box, but rather an absolute encoder. The sensor has 512 increments. An absolute, in other words, multi-turn resolution of 4096. And the fine resolution is correct, so I don't have to change anything here. Now we move on to the extended parameters and examine the controller. We keep the pre-control at 100%. We increase the KV factor from 10 to 30, so that the axis is somewhat more dynamic. And we also activate the dynamic servo control. By means of dynamic servo control, DSC, we divide up the controller somewhat. First, there is the target value generation that remains in the controller and is calculated at a cycle of one millisecond, for example. In addition, we use the fast controller for 125 microseconds in the drive, and as a result, we can more quickly compensate for disturbances. And now we add a second axis, creating a new technology object for this purpose. Also, a motion control object, and here, a synchronous axis. As with the first axis, here we also have a rotational axis, and we need to define the hardware interface for this one as well. Here we also use the ProfiDrive Telegram, select the axis, which in this case is the blue axis, the slave axis, in our system. We then move down to the data exchange and the Telegram 5 remains the same as with the first axis. Reference values are also 6000 RPM and here the sensor is already properly set up because here we are using a rotational sensor with 2048 increments. Now we want to specify the master for the synchronous axis. Here we select the positioning axis. And now we still have to edit the advanced parameters, as with the master axis. And here we keep the pre-control of the controller at 100%, increase the KV factor from 10 to 30, and we also activate the DSC. Now we have created both technology objects, and we now open the program blocks. With the program blocks, you can see that thanks to the technology objects, two organization blocks have been created automatically. On the one hand is the MC servo, and on the other, the MC interpolator. These are intended to run at the same cycle as our bus, and that is why I open the properties of the MC servo, go to the cycle time, and I adjust the cycle time specifically to our Profinet system. Now we want to create a small program for controlling the drives. To do so, we open the main OB1. In the first network, we want to actuate the red axis. Here on the far right, there are various instructions. Here we want to switch on the motion control technology instructions. And with the MC power, we will switch on the first axis. Here we still need to assign the axes. The first axis is the positioning axis, and we want to start the axis with the input 0.0. .0. As a next step, we want to perform a relative traversing move. To do this, we drag over the move relative function block. Then we also want to actuate the positioning axis. We start with the input 0.1. And how far do we want it to move? Let's say 1440 degrees, which corresponds to four rotations. Next, we create the blue axis. There we also need an MC power in order to switch on the axis. Here we want to switch on the synchronous axis, so we use the same input as above, the input 0.0. And then we enter the MC, and with this step we couple the slave axis to the master axis. The master axis is our positioning axis. The slave axis is the synchronous axis, and we couple it with the input 0.2. Now we load the program into the controller. Now our configuration is completely compiled. We load it, reboot the controller, and can now move the axes. With the first input, I enable the axes. 
The second input will carry out the relative traversing move of the red axis. This means I can independently position the red axis, and now we couple the slave axis with the third input and start both axes. You can see how both axes spin synchronously. With just a few clicks, we have now put the drive bus into operation, written a user program, and synchronized the axes with each other. A major advantage of Profinet is that it's a high-performance drive bus that can run standard services such as OPC UA and TCP IP in parallel, and it provides the best diagnostics in the market.